Once you've explored the data in the discovery-driven analysis section, the next part would be the actual hypothesis-driven information, mainly in the form of differential gene expression analysis. So going to that DGE tab, what we can see is the experimental setup of our comparison. Uh, we have a few different experimental design options here. The two group comparisons is the very basic level of where you're comparing any of the two factor levels or any of the pairwise factor levels. We also have multiple factor comparisons is also referred to as a factorial design, which allows you to uh, separate the information a little bit more. If we wanted to do the treated paired end versus the untreated single end, we could actually do that comparison specifically here. If you have time point data, that might be of something that's particularly of interest. Um, we also have things like classic interaction designs, paired or blocked models, main effects or main effects with grouping factors, and a custom design that allows you to specify using a uh, matrix informa of information how, you're, how you want your experimental design set up if it does not match any of these factors. So we'll go with the two group comparisons here. Uh, the method that we have, we have three built-in tools here, three of the most commonly used R-based uh, differential gene expression analysis tools. DESeq2 is the default tool. Uh, also EdgeR and Limavoom are quite popular. Uh, we have an adjusted p-value cutoff that will specify if it's below this threshold, then it's considered significant, and a minimum fold change, uh, log base to fold change threshold that determines whether or not it's a significantly different uh, comparison. We also then, at this point, can select our experimental parameters. In this case, we're going to look at either condition or type, and we would then select the comparisons we actually want made. Here, these are the exact same comparison, just inverted so we'll just select one of them it also gives us a little bit of look into the linear model how it would actually look once we've made all of our selections we can submit the analysis which will then run the uh, deseq2 program to do the actual comparisons this is also sometimes time consuming depending on the size of data you have so you might want to be patient in the overview what we'll see is the number of genes that are up or down regulated related to these comparisons the number of ids there that is based off of these thresholds so the minimum log fold change, if it's above 1 and a significant p-value lower than 0.05, then it would be considered upregulated and downregulated. This would be below negative 1. This table can be downloaded then. Uh, we also have a relatively basic histogram here that shows the, uh, or sorry, a bar plot here that shows the a number of up and down regulated genes. Especially if you have multiple comparisons being made, you'll see a lot more information here as well. Then we can move on to the plots. We can choose the, the contrast that we'd like selected. If we'd select different comparisons here, we'd have different options to select here, but we only selected one. Uh, we have two options here, the MA plot and the volcano plot, each of which has a specific use. The MA plot is showing us the base mean, the transform base mean relative to the fold change. It's also an interactive figure where it shows us the IDs. Here, what's only shown are things that satisfy these two cutoffs. If you download either of these plots, what you'll see is actually the full plot with a lot of color resolution showing whether or not it's a significant difference and whether it's a large enough difference. Again, here you can select on the, you can click and scroll and it'll actually highlight some of these points. That's interesting and useful because what happens if you highlight these points You'll see in the table here below, which is the actual table of the output of the analysis, is the IDs, base means, full change, adjusted p-values and such. If they are selected here, if we select any of these points, what it'll do is actually highlight them in this cell. And it's also uh, interactive the opposite way. We can select particular gene IDs of interest, and here what happens is they are highlighted within the figure itself. You can also search for particular gene IDs if there's a gene that you're interested in. You can search here or expand this to up to 100 entries to look at the connectivity between these two. This table is also downloadable and you can download either in the filtered format based on these cutoffs or you can download the entire data. You can also look at a volcano plot, which is a little bit different information. It also involves the fold change, but it then looks at the log p value. It's called a volcano plot because we get this uh, exploding look in uh, towards the outsides. If you look at the full figure, you'll see that a lot more clearly. What you see is also that same interactivity. 
And then the same selectivity, actually, when I switched between the two plots, this did not get changed. So what I see is this same one is highlighted. These are also all highlighted within this figure. Again, downloadable as a PDF and PNG plot. What you can also do here, uh, while we didn't integrate it within the server itself, there's plenty of servers out there and plenty of tools out there that do satisfactory jobs of functional enrichment. So what we have here is a little bit of an introduction into how you can use any of these tools for the analysis related to this server.